Welcome, friends. This is Jim McDonald, a disciple of Jesus Christ and a preacher of the Word of God for 71 years, inviting you to join me with a journey through the book of Acts. As we look at the book of Acts, it is a very interesting book, and it is a journey that I've made many, many times through the years. It's a journey that I've never made, except it is that uh, I've been benefited by it. And I believe that if you will join with me in the study of this sacred book, that you likewise will be benefited by it. Of course, I'm fully conscious of the fact that while I may begin this journey this day, I may not conclude it, because the scriptures teach us, boast not thyself of the morrow, for who knows what a day may bring forth. And James said, Come now, ye that say, today or tomorrow we will go into a city and spend a year there and trade and get gain. Whereas you do not know what should be on the morrow. What is your life? You are as a vapor that appear for a little while and then vanish the way. For that the, the Lord says, uh, we should say, if the Lord will, we will do this or that. The book of Acts is the fifth book of a very small volume, but a sacred, inspired volume by the Holy Spirit of God. That little volume is called the New Testament. Is that it contains the last will and testimony of Jesus Christ, our Lord. The book of Acts is that, that is the fifth of 27 books that are in the New Testament. And these 27 books are arranged in a very logical and a very way that is giving enlightenment to us. These 27 books comprise, in essence, a miniature library. The first four of the books are ones we call the Gospels. They contain the life of of Jesus Christ, not four different lives, not four different uh, Gospels, but all relating frequently the same details that the other does. But almost all of them record things that the others do not contain. And as these conclude, they conclude with Jesus' commission to the apostles to go into the world and preach the Gospel to every creature. The book of Acts is actually the history of those disciples going and doing what the Lord commanded them to do. The next 13 books after Acts are letters that are the letters that were written by Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles. And then there comes eight letters that are called the letters that are general epistles. These were written by different authors, and the author of one is not named, and so we do not and cannot say certainly who was the author of the book of Hebrews. But the final book is the book of Revelation. It is a book of prophecy. When we look at the book of Acts, it's very interesting in many ways, because, as we stated, the Gospels ended with the Lord's commission to the apostles to preach the gospel into all the world. But the book of Acts is not solely histories and the activities of the apostles. We find other disciples who are ones that are familiar and well-known names to us. We find Barnabas. We find not only Barnabas, but we find Timothy. And Mark, and we find others that are there in the New Testament, in the book of Acts. It is a book that is the history also and the activities of two apostles. The first half of the book, roughly, is a history of the life of the apostle Peter. He was the Lord's choice to be his spokesman. To him, Jesus gave the keys of the kingdom. And the first 12 chapters, although 
Paul is mentioned earlier. The first 12 chapters are those that center around the activities of, and the work of this apostle. When we look at that, we find then that the second half of the book, roughly, is that that is a history of a, another apostle. He identifies himself as one born out of due season. Uh, he was not numbered with the original 12, but he was an apostle in every sense of the word. Peter's work is that, that while not confined exclusively to Jews, for he preached the first gospel sermon to a Gentile, nevertheless, it was that that was confined mostly to the Jewish world. On the other hand, the work of Paul, while preaching to Jews in every city he went to, he went first to the Jew and then to the Greek. But his work was that that was largely concerned with the preaching of the gospel to the Gentiles. And thus these are the two large segments of the world, the Jew and the Gentile. And the scriptures declare that the book of Acts deals with the revelation of the gospel to both these segments of mankind. When we look, I want you to join with me in the reading of the first five verses of the book. The record says, The former treatise I made, O Theopolis, concerning all that Jesus began both to do and to teach, until the day in which he was received up, after that he had given commandment through the Holy Spirit unto the apostles whom he chosen, to whom he also showed himself alive after his passion by many proofs, appearing unto them by the space of forty days, and speaking things concerning the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, he charged them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, he heard from me. For John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized in the Holy Spirit not many days hence. When the writer of this book says, The former treatise I made unto thee, O Theopolis, first he addresses the one and names the one to whom the book is addressed, Theopolis. We know very little about Theopolis. In fact, the only times in the scriptures that the name occurs is in two letters, or the book of Acts, and we'll see in yet another book. And when the apostle says that the former treatise I made unto thee, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach, the word former indicates something. The letter, the book that is about to begin and will continue is that that is a sequel is a sequel to an earlier book and as we look at those earlier books there were four of them and as we look at each of them we come to the book of Luke and it also is addressed to a man by the name of Theopolis so Acts is a sequel to the book of Luke. And when we look back in the book of Luke, we find that the scripture speaks, tells us that Luke concluded his gospel of Christ by giving to them the commission that's found also in Matthew, Mark, and John. In that commission, we find that Jesus said in Matthew, All power have been given to me in heaven and earth. Go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, Lord, with you always, even to the end of the world. Mark puts it this way. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And Luke's account is this, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all the nations, 
beginning from Jerusalem. The historian in Luke 24 then goes on to give a very brief account of the ascension of our Lord back to his father's home and to the right hand of him who sent him into this world. Now, we do know the name of he who the book of Luke was written to and to whom the book of Acts was equally addressed to. But nowhere in either the book of Luke or the book of Acts is the writer of this book or these books revealed. Now we know that the Holy Spirit was the one that prompted them and caused that the writing should be done. But the vessel through whom the Holy Spirit functioned is not named. Early on, however, it was concluded by early Christians in the latter part of the first century and the second century that Luke, a companion of Paul, whose name does not appear anywhere on the pages of either the book of Luke or Acts, that he who was a constant companion with Paul, particularly in his prison years, and who was the only one that was with him when he was facing execution. It is agreed by the world in general that Luke was the author of this volume, Luke and Acts. Notice that Luke says in Acts, the former treatise I made unto the Theophilus of all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day in which he was received up. The expression of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach is really hyperbole. Luke is not to be understood as saying that every single thing that Jesus did is recorded in this volume. To the contrary, we know otherwise. Although John wrote his gospel many, many years after Luke had written his gospel, John records details that were not recorded in the gospel of Luke, but which occurred during the time frame that Luke wrote about. John tells us about Jesus turning water to wine in his personal ministry. But Luke in his book, says nothing about this miracle. John tells us about a man at the pool of Bethesda being healed by the Lord, but Luke does not record it. In the book of John, the ninth chapter, John tells us about a blind man, blind from his mother's womb, who was healed and given sight by the master. Luke does not record that. John records that marvelous story of a friend of Jesus by the name of Lazarus that was raised from the dead, John in the 11th chapter. But Luke does not mention that. But neither does Luke include all the teachings that Jesus gave on pertinent subjects. The marvelous account of the new birth found in John 3 is not spoken of by Luke. Remember, when John wrote his book in the 20th chapter of the Gospel of John, John wrote, Many other signs and wonders truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written, that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have a life in his name. So when John said many other signs and wonders, truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, we learn from that that John did not write all of the things that occurred to Jesus. In fact, in the last few verses of John, the 21st chapter, John writes, And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written, every one, I, I suppose that even the world itself, could not contain the things that should be written. So when Luke said that the former treatise was that that consisted of all the things 
that Jesus began both to do it and to teach. We must understand that the historian is giving a summary in the book of Luke and not an item by item of everything that Jesus did. But never fear. One could look at, read the Gospel of John, and if he did not have either Matthew or Mark or John, he could find sufficient evidence to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and through that faith to have life in his name. Not only is it something that we must recognize that Luke did not literally include everything that Jesus had done and said. We're not to suppose, on the other hand, that Luke, in the forward journal that he is writing, will include all the details as far as the lives of the apostles. It's interesting to note that uh, a companion of Paul, who was with him in Ephesus and Corinth, these would be in chapters 19 and chapters 20 of Acts by the name of Titus. Although his name appears in the Paul's letters to the Corinthians, his name is not found in the book of Acts at all. And when we look at the conversion of Saul in the ninth chapter, the 22nd chapter, the 26th chapter, Nowhere does the historian record that Paul, at his conversion in Damascus, that he left for a period of time and went to Arabia and then came back to Damascus. The historian does not record that. But Paul tells us that in the book of Galatians, the first chapter. And so, he speaks of all the things that Jesus began both to do and to teach until the day in which he was received up after that he had given commandment to the apostles through the Holy Spirit. Two final things. First, the apostles are charged by the Master before he ascends back to the Father that they are to tarry in the city until they be endued with power from on high. They are to remain there, and they are to wait until the promise of the Father comes upon them. And then we find that Jesus, having thus charged his apostles to go into the city and to abide there, wait for the promise of the Father, he is received up into heaven, where he is reigned from that day to this. We hope that you will continue with us as we look at this sacred volume that tells us about the apostles fulfilling the command God said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We will see apostles and preachers, Christians, and some of them not preachers of the word, but others who, believing that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of God, obeyed his gospel and became a great part of that grand movement that Jesus came to establish for the benefit of you and for me. We hope that you will continue with us as we continue a journey through the Acts.